Hello, hello. Have you seen the weather bug? This is the into thin air weather bug. All right, guys, we got severe weather. We got to talk about northeast stretching into Canada. We got an invest in the sort of Gulf, maybe moving into the Gulf from the uh, Dominican Republic area just past Puerto Rico over the next five days. We got Comet Nui's also in the sky till July 23rd. Awesome stuff, guys. Here we go. Always trying to keep you on your toes. Welcome back, everyone. July 19th, 2020, 12.01 p.m. We're looking at the northeast of the U.S. right now on a pretty solid radar chart, I'd say. We got a lot of options on this chart. We could check out uh, precipitation uh, by itself, uh, distance between the clouds and the ground, all sorts of things that do matter when it comes to severe weather. And we can clearly see right now we have a lot of severe weather going on from the states of Illinois through Indiana, uh, we got Ohio in there, PA, and then western New York, also significant parts of Canada as well, as this is a storm that is coming over the Great Lakes. It did cause a lot of issues over Minnesota and the Dakotas before it got here. If you guys remember, we had a huge system right over the Dakotas here that moved in uh, kind of through Montana and then did its thing in Minnesota. And now it's kind of regrouping over the Great Lakes. So uh, we have a few charts to look at to see the severity of a lot of these storms. as we get a um, serious or severe weather warning, it pops up on this chart here. So a very good tool to use is Radar Scope as well. Um, I know it costs a little money to pay for it. I don't make anything off Radar Scope. I'm just giving you guys the idea that this is a great uh, app for a weather enthusiast to use. We also have a chart we like to use to uh, try to get an, an idea of where the most severe hit areas as far as, pre as precipitation is going to go. And according to this chart, I mean, compared to that lightning we saw, it doesn't look half as bad, but you can kind of see Minnesota and the uh, eastern parts of the Dakotas here. This is where most of that system actually dumped a lot of its rain as it, now it's going over the uh, Great Lakes, but this is an accumulative chart uh, which gives you um, uh, precipitation over time. And you kind of look down here into the Gulf, guys, and we kind of see a signature of a pretty severe storm or system moving across the south uh, part of Florida into the Gulf and then talking about Texas and Louisiana. That's because we finally have another invest in the Atlantic Ocean um, as far as possible cyclone activity. So we're going to take a look at that now. Uh, we can see in the northeast we do have some decent rainfall over the next four or five days. Nothing crazy. But Minnesota and then the center of the country here and then, of course, into the Gulf is where we really want to focus our attention as we have a 20 percent chance of cyclone formation in the Gulf. And this could very well affect Texas and Louisiana, whether it becomes a named storm or not. And guys, before I get off track here and finish up with our invest in the Atlantic Ocean, I want to show you guys a little chart here on Comet Nui's that's been out in the sky since July 15th. All right, this is how I'm going to explain it because um, I've, I've been asking questions all over YouTube and stuff, and I've been looking for it myself. I have not yet to see this thing, only because of where my house is kind of located. I'm at the... Uh I'm halfway down a hill into a valley, um, and even if I were to go up to the top of this hill, it's hard to see 
uh, this part of the sky when it comes to the Big Dipper. So what I've been told is to look for the Big Dipper and then count three fists down from the bowl. I've also been told to count three fists down from the handle. So basically what you want to do is this is July 15th, which is come and gone. Each dot represents a different day and where it will be by July 23rd. And we're looking at the 19th. So we're at 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So wherever you can find the Big Dipper where you live in the country, just kind of measure down from the handle straight down. And you should see it closest to the horizon about an hour after sunset. Very cool sights according to the pictures I've been seeing. And um, I hope this chart helps you guys freeze frame it or you can uh, just hit pause and kind of get an idea of where you're going to be. Here's Polaris and here's the uh, other star I'm not going to even try to pronounce right now. So uh, we have until the 23rd, guys, which is a pretty decent amount of time. I suggest you go check it out while you can. All right, on to the invest. All right, guys, we're back on the COD chart, and we can look down here, just kind of visualize um, Dominican Republic and um, Haiti, Haiti down in this area, and then we got Puerto Rico down here just off the frame, but we can see this, this cluster system right here, and then it stretches over into the Gulf, almost leading right into uh, Louisiana, it looks like, kind of missing Texas, but this path is kind of like a foreshadowing of where this thing wants to go, this invest we're talking about. We're not a cyclone yet. But we can see these storms really bubbling up here. Whenever you see those tall level clouds blowing up in the sky, we always know there's a storm underneath and that's going on a lot in the northeast as well. But here is that system right here and you can see it really kind of clustering within itself. You don't see that whole system moving on its own. Uh, that's because the pressures, the highs and lows going on around it are what control any sort of cyclone formation or storms in the ocean or over land. They're all controlled by different... Um, different uh, pressures and different um, upper level wind uh, paths and things like that. There's all sorts of stuff that we get into here. But we can kind of see the basic idea here is that this storm is kind of sitting and brewing. And we can see a little bit of a trail of some of the moisture being pulled off under Florida, um, just above Cuba, and then into the Gulf. So this is kind of like, like I said, a foreshadowing of the path of what to expect with this thing if it forms. So we can look here at the invest chart that we like to look at. Usually these things pop up. The X is where this thing is right now so we're just above Dominican Republic and Haiti right in this area so we can see why that weather is being shown to be pulled under Florida and then into this area and it says 20% chance of disturbance or cyclone formation over five days it's a tropical wave that's been located over Hispaniola and uh, it's adjacent waters of the southern Atlantic is expected to move west northwest so we're moving west northwest which brings us right into the Gulf here so as of right now we still have some time to keep an eye on this thing and watch it uh, we're looking at a possible disturbance moving into the area of Texas the exposed part of Texas into the Gulf and that means parts of Louisiana too that's because the Bermuda Atlantic bubble let's show you this on here the Bermuda Atlantic bubble that we see in the middle of the Atlantic here if you notice this ring stretches all the way inland into the southeast part of the United States. This kind of bends down into the Gulf too. So what it does is it pushes any sort of system underneath the high pressure along the bottom edge of it. So this thing is going to push this down into this area unless this high pressure bubble in the Atlantic pulls closer this way. And if it cuts off here, it could let it go up the, uh, the east coast of Florida instead. Again, that is if this thing even forms to begin with. We can see it beginning to form uh, with our own eyes at this point on the radar charts, so we know it's there. We know it's got potential. So what we need to do is then carry it over with that information and see if it actually goes in this trajectory. And we could tell that by the highs and lows that are going on around the Atlantic Ocean and in the U.S. So I know that's a lot to take in all at once, but I felt the need to explain that. And we can see, guys, it's kind of getting active now. I know we've had the Sahara sand coming across moving all the way to the warm water belt into the U.S., but now we have low-pressure systems popping up all the way from the western part of Africa all the way down into the southern Caribbean and up into the Gulf. So that's what we need to keep an eye out for as we get into this part of hurricane season. Very important to be alert and to check these weather sites uh, on a daily basis. So that's all I got for you uh, for now, guys. I appreciate the patience. I'm trying to get videos out on a daily basis now. If you have any questions, concerns, or anything you want to know about the channel, Please let me know. Other than that, I hope everyone's staying warm. It's been very hot out, and we're going to keep an eye on this invest. Right now, we're at 20%, and we're waiting to see exactly where this thing wants to go within the Gulf. So even if this is a tropical storm, guys, it's definitely going to be serious enough to where it's worth watching. All right, guys, take care. hope everyone has a great day and a great rest of your weekend. All right, bye-bye.